What's good? What's happening? Patrick CC, the late nightmare of Jimmy Fallon. There's an undeniable sincerity that emanates from Jimmy Fallon. He's not just a talk show host, he's a friend you've known for years, inviting you into his world with open arms. Since his late night debut in 2009, Jimmy has almost unanimously been loved by fans and celebrities, but not anymore. The people closest to Jimmy, the ones he relies on the most, have come forward to reveal that his actual character behind the scenes is the total opposite of lovable and genuine. Erratic. Damn. Hey, bro. This, uh, when people get behind the camera, bro, they end up being some person they're not, bro. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's unfortunate because it's like, you're supposed to be yourself. You feel me? Because you putting up an act for he said 2009 bro that's a long time you know what i'm saying what was that that's like 12 13 14 years bro of putting up a front and you really not like that you know what i'm saying it's like that's sad bro that's sad i ain't gonna lie behavior outbursts intimidation avoid eye contact nobody told jimmy no these quotes don't sound like the unapologetically joyful tonight show host we know but these revelations might not be shocking to some as many people have speculated jimmy's nice guy persona is entirely fake more specifically his fake laugh <laughs> you can't <fix> it. <laughs> Jimmy will laugh at just about everything, to the point where he sounds like a programmed laugh track being controlled by a producer backstage. If you think Bruh. about embarrassment scale of 1 to 10, okay. 1 is just like being a person walking down the street, mm -hmm. and 10 is, for me, uh, co-hosting the Oscars with James Franco. <laughs> <laughs> Without letting Ann mention why this was embarrassing, Jimmy just bursts out into laughter when there was nothing funny about what she said. Uh -huh. And then he tries to connect my, uh, my, my right foot to my left arm. <laughs> and he's, he's trying to connect them like this, and I'm in such pain, I go uh, like that. Yeah. And, it, and, his, and his belly goes in my mouth. <laughs> Even Ryan Gosling looked at Jimmy confused as to why he was laughing so hard. They both play it off awkwardly because they quickly realize this is harmless and it only makes them look better or funnier. There's no point in calling him out, but Taylor Swift wasn't having it. Uh, the VMAs are coming up August 24th, and they're saying, I heard that Taylor Swift will be performing. Can you confirm or deny? Um, I mean, we've had a really good time today. Taylor! So, Taylor! Well, see where I'm going with this at least. Nobody ever listens to me. Oh it's my gosh. Oh my god. So, what I was saying is. You're not even looking at me. Because I'm, cause I'm trying to think of what to say next. If he isn't interrupting them with laughter, he is interrupting them with other pointless talking. Taylor Swift's frustration was a little more obvious. I don't lie, bro. I've always found these type of like shows a little weird bro you know what i'm saying because he's not the only one who has a show like this you feel me it's just it's all fake bro it feels fake it's then david spade it wasn't even the first one but i squeaked yeah. on you did stand up when i did uh i'll tell the story when i David just gave him a little jab, and Jimmy knew he was wrong for interrupting the comedian, so he tried to make Dave look like the bad guy and walk off. This wasn't the first time Jimmy walked off set to avoid an awkward situation that he caused. No, it's about uh, how uh, you can beat a human well, why being down you, don't to- Don't tell anyone, it's okay, let him just- uh, Just see the movie. Yeah, or yeah, not. Yeah. Or not. Yeah. You know what the movie's about, kind of, right? Yeah, so you don't need me. No. You don't need me. No, no. Do it. It no you don't need me. Doing, do no, it, no, do no, 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 no,
conversations with quick jokes or laughs in an attempt to make sure the audience is engaged, but then it ends up doing the opposite. I mean, every time a guest is talking, he leans in, stares at them intensely, maybe reaches his arm out, and is waiting for a split second to interrupt to make sure you are entertained. The other thing that agitates people is how he showers every single guest with compliments. You're my favorite, we love you, it's my favorite movie, my favorite album, as if celebrities need any more ego stroking. Jimmy's defenders think all this controversy is Oh man, that ego shit, bro. That ego shit is something. It's ridiculous. Should he not laugh? Just sit there and be awkward? His show is supposed to be fun. He just wants his guests to be relaxed and confident in front of a live audience. This can definitely explain his overreactions to guests winning his mini games. Le Sounds like a poodle. Yeah. A leopard turtle. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Now it seems ridiculous to nitpick this from Jimmy because fake reactions have been a crucial part of TV and YouTube forever. David Dobrik, KSI, and Joe Rogan have been acting, large contributors bro. to the fake laughter, fake reaction epidemic. Okay. Ah. And if you think there is, it's very like, ah. I know everything. Ah. I kind of do agree with a lot of what he said. What the fuck is going on? Jimmy bro. is a people pleaser and just wants to make everyone comfortable. Bless his heart. That laugh does the opposite to me. It feels <laughs> like he's hiding something. And Jimmy may be hiding something. A lifetime of alcoholism. And the reason he began drinking may shock you. But first, a word from our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest sign up Get with code bright, Patrick CC today to take advantage and win some money. As a Get teenager, it. Jimmy was obsessed with Saturday Night Live. The program had been running for nearly two decades, and Jimmy was fully immersed, insisting on watching the program alone in pure silence because he hated unnecessary commentary from others. Although he could only see the clean parts his parents taped for him, Jimmy didn't miss a single sketch or punchline and remained devoted to learning as much as possible. Ironically, his parents didn't want him watching adult humor sketches, but they would let him drink alcohol while watching. As long as I wasn't doing anything at night, I'd just sit by myself and I would have a six pack of Pabst. I don't know if I made it all the way through the six, but I'd just sit there and watch the show and tape it. He and his sister Gloria reenacted sketches with friends before Jimmy discovered a talent for impressions, <clears throat> often impersonating actor James Cagney and comedian Dana Carvey. I was one of those kids who, if I hung around another kid for an hour, I was that kid. Fallon said, it was weird. I'd come home and I'd do his type of humor, his type of mannerisms. And my mom would say, okay, Joey, you want dinner now? Cause I'd be acting like Joey Gonzalez. From a young age, Jimmy was an imitator, instinctively copying and mimicking things that he thought were funny instead of having the drive to produce his own material, which was an early sign of being the perfect late night television host. Through hours of meticulously studying various comedy and musical Shit. routines, Fallon continued working on his craft and established himself as a performer at Saugerties High School, appearing in most stage productions. It was a rush. I think it was the rush of getting a reaction. Maybe it's acceptance. Maybe it's a thing where you're pleasing somebody. I want to be friends with everybody. And if you make a joke and everyone laughs, you're like, that's it, I scored. That's yeah. what I thought making a friend was. You just feel like people liked you. So maybe it was that, acceptance. Damn, that's crazy, bro. Cause like obviously like, you know, not everybody's gonna crack a joke and it's gonna hit. <laughs> you feel me? It's, it's like, that's regular. But the whole like feeling like people like you because they're laughing at you and you feel accepted, I, I see where he's coming from with that. It seems like Jimmy's people pleaser mentality has been in full effect since his youth. His obsession with Saturday Night Live carried on throughout his time at St. Rose College in New York, skipping parties and events so that he could watch SNL as it aired. Fallon lived Eesh. for the weekends when he would regularly board buses from his aunt's house in Fort Hamilton to perform stand-up comedy sets at Caroline's on Broadway and Times Square. On stage is where Jimmy felt most at home, and his urge to make audiences laugh couldn't be ignored as he dropped out of college in 1995 to move to Los Angeles, California to pursue comedy full time. He secured a manager who got him very minor roles in comedy films like Father's Day and television sitcoms like Spin City, but it didn't matter because his dream wasn't to become an actor. Jimmy remained fixated on joining Saturday Night Live. After two years of working on his sketch Dedication. comedy and improv skills with the Groundlings, he took a leap of faith and auditioned for SNL. L, but bombed. This career setback could have killed his dreams as a comedian altogether, but his yep. obsession with SNL wouldn't let him give up when he- That's passion right there, bro. That's passion right there. That's passion. That's dedication, bro. Getting turned down for something, but you still have that drive to keep pushing, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's a different type of dedication, passion, bro.
perseverance. He landed a small role on a Warner Brothers sitcom. Fallon negotiated a clause in his contract that would release him if he got on SNL. The producers agreed only because they thought it would never happen. This was my ultimate goal. If I ever cut into a birthday cake Damn. and made a wish, I would wish to be on SNL. If I threw a coin into a fountain, I would wish to be on SNL. If I saw a shooting star, I would wish to be on SNL. It's crazy. I had no other plan. I didn't Damn. have friends. I didn't have a girlfriend. I didn't have anything going on. I had my career. That was it. SNL is notorious for Focus, its difficult- bro. Tunnel vision. I respect that grind, bro. I respect that, like, that hunger, you feel me? Audition stage. The series creator, Lauren Michaels, almost never laughed during auditions, and it would take a special talent to grab his attention. Fallon recalls three different people warning him about Lauren's lack of laughter, but he learned a lot from his first catastrophe. Can tell that boy don't laugh. Look at his fucking lips. Where are they? Where are they, bro? You got no lips. Catastrophic performance. Well, they never cracked a smile. He would come prepared with nothing but himself <laughs> and his impressions, something that he perfected over time. Jimmy marched on that stage, performing a celebrity walkathon with impressions of Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, Bill Cosby, and Adam Sandler. To his surprise, Michaels and other executives could not stop laughing. I was in the room that day, says former SNL writer Tina Fey. He's one of two people I've ever seen who was completely ready to be on the show. Kristen Wiig is the other one. And Jimmy was ready like if there had been a show to do that night. Lauren Facts. Michaels informed Jimmy that his dreams were now a reality. There's he was going goal. to be a cast member of Saturday Night Live. All Jimmy could do was look at Michaels and tell him, I'm going to make you proud. He debuted beside the cast of SNL as a featured player during its 24th season in September 1998. Fallon established himself as a household name overnight, becoming known for his spot-on impressions of various celebrities and public figures. While he was living out his dream, Jimmy was also developing a scary addiction that would come back to haunt him decades later. During their time at SNL, Fallon and cast member Horatio Sands often drank together. Sands has described himself and Fallon as super functioning alcoholics, and stated, that kind of goes hand in hand with SNL. Some kind of substance abuse issues because it's so stressful you could easily find yourself blowing off steam a lot. Sands recounted how he and Fallon got in a couple of brawls. I've seen Jimmy clock a few people, he said. Jimmy could fight. I don't know where he learned, but he definitely <laughs> scrapped with the best of them. Jimmy working in a high-stress environment and abusing his health to cope is potential foreshadowing for the work environment he would create on his own show. He always planned to leave Saturday Night Live after three seasons. However, Lauren Michaels offered him a role on Weekend Update with Tina Fey, which is essentially the comedic news section that SNL covers every week. Jeez. Unfortunately, Jimmy also developed a negative reputation on SNL as somebody who can't hold in his laughter. At first, it was an innocent mistake that began in the famous More Cowbell sketch, when Will Ferrell wore a tight shirt that caused Fallon to break character. Every cast member was laughing during this skit because, well, it was hilarious. But that moment <laughs> opened a revolving door of cast members intentionally trying to- Bro, it's hard to hold- Yo, it's hard to stay in character when shit- if, Like, it's hard to stay in character sometimes, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, if some shit funny and you notice somebody laughing, you just gonna laugh, bro. That shit contagious. ...to get Jimmy to break character, and he did break character, <laughs> a lot, interrupting the punchlines and comedic timing by laughing and giggling. While some thought it was hilarious, others found it insensitive and believed he was attempting to steal their spotlight and make the sketches about himself. Lauren didn't Damn. like it. The writers didn't like it. I'm not trying to do it on purpose. I'm trying not to do it. But sometimes it just got insane. I couldn't hold it in. It was just so much fun. I ain't gonna lie, bro. <laughs> I'm the type of person where, like, if everybody's laughing and shit, and, like, after a minute or two, everybody stops laughing, I'm, I'm gonna be the one still laughing about it, bro. I am that person who laughs five minutes after a joke or something has been done and said, bro. No cap. No cap. SNL has always tried to maintain the no best cap. of the best when it comes to comedic talent. Comedians laughing at their own jokes can sometimes be seen as unprofessional. In 2004, Jimmy decided to leave SNL and move into traditional acting. He signed a two-movie deal with 20th Century Fox with the hopes of becoming a prominent star in the industry. The first was a lead role in the 2004 Taxi. action comedy Taxi, alongside then-rapper-turned-actor Queen Peep Latifah. That. The other that. was the 2005 romantic Fever comedy Fever Pitch, alongside Drew Barrymore. Both 
films received mixed reviews and had decent box office performance, but were not the first impression Jimmy Fallon wanted. With back-to-back -back disappointments, film offers rapidly decreased as studio executives grew hesitant to feature Fallon in future projects. He experienced what he has deemed a lost period, characterized by a larger-than-usual alcohol consumption and uncertainty about his future career choices. I was probably drinking more than I should have been drinking, he confessed. It wasn't like sitting and watching old tapes of me on SNL with the screen flickering in front of me, I was like, I can't figure out what I want to do. Fortunately for Fallon, the man who gave him his dream job at SNL was about to save him once again, as the host of Late Night had an opening in 2009 after oh, Conan no, O'Brien was transitioning to The Tonight Show. But yeah. Jimmy didn't make the best first impression. Many quickly realized that Jimmy wasn't edgy or dark enough for late night comedy. GQ claimed Jimmy was too cute for late night audiences, used to hanging out with the- Bro, I don't- I'd like- just hearing all of this, right? I'm just like, bro, why are they so fucking like nitpicky in these industries? You know what I'm saying? Especially in like the act and music industry, bro. Like, why do motherfuckers gotta be so nitpicky with shit? You know what I'm saying? Because like, this is, it's, this is him. This is who Jimmy Fallon is. You feel me? So it's like, y'all pretty much expecting a lot from these people. It's like, I don't know, bro. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know. The snarky, cool crowd, suggesting he was too corny. Yeah, the cool crowd was always beyond my grasp, he admitted. Late Night with Jimmy Fallon premiered on NBC in early March 2009. The series immediately outperformed CBS's The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson Crazy. by half a million viewers. Yeesh. Fallon also garnered more viewers than his predecessor, Conan O'Brien. Late yep. Night with Jimmy Fallon was one of the first late night talk shows to embrace social media and use it as an integral part of the show's engagement with its audience. Crazy. Jimmy was able to connect with the youth who weren't watching TV at midnight in 2012 by regular regular uploads to YouTube, particularly comedic sketches and challenges with their favorite celebrities. I got these tickets uh, to the One Direction concert. Ew! I love One Direction! Do you have an extra ticket? Yeah. <laughs> Many of these videos amassed millions of views, but it was Bruh. nothing compared to the dominance he would have on The Tonight Show. In early 2014, Jimmy Fallon transitioned to NBC's The Tonight Show, where he had big shoes to fill. From Steve Allen to Jack Parr, to the iconic Johnny Carson who stamped the show's legacy for 30 years, then Jay Leno and Conan O'Brien, it was now Jimmy's oh. job to lead the most popular late night show of all time. He debuted to a staggering 11.3 11. 11. million viewers. 11. Yeah. And despite all the alleged fake laughing, overreactions, Boy. interruptions, and being too corny, he dominated late night television. The show averaged 3 to 4 million live concurrent viewers throughout the years, but also embraced social media with their Jeez. YouTube channel that has amassed 30 million subscribers, with multiple videos and the hundreds of millions of views. A lot of Jimmy's segments mimic the format of YouTube challenges. Crazy, Many of you have never even watched late night, but have seen tons of The Tonight Show's YouTube segments, such as lip sync battle. He's not lying, because everything I watch involving this shit is on YouTube, bro. He's not lying. Musical impressions and egg Russian roulette, where he and his guests would engage in playful competitions resulting in funny and often viral moments. His comedic sketches and style often mimicked SNL because of his obsession and Lord Michael's production. Jimmy is like the personification of a golden retriever, and America loved him. And although the late night host is a high profile and often rewarding role, the pressure can be severe. Late night hosts are expected to be funny and entertaining every night. The Thanks. constant pressure to deliver humor can be mentally and emotionally taxing. Late night hosts must stay up to date with current events and pop culture trends. To it's crazy because then you start like obviously thinking about the late night show and stuff. Now you start to think about podcasts and like I feel like nowadays you, you got to stand out, especially if you're the host, you got to stand out in some way, shape or form. You feel me? But I feel like with podcasts, you have more freedom and more freedom with everything. You feel me? Like what you say, what you do, how you present yourself, how you hold yourself and stuff like that. Pretty much being yourself. I feel like with podcasts is, is, is it's more free nowadays, I feel like. To keep their material relevant, which requires continuous research and adaptability. The aspect of balancing multiple roles can also be demanding, as late night hosts are not just comedians, they are also producers, writers, 
and often performers in various sketches and segments, coming up with fresh and original content night after night can be creatively exhausting, as hosts must continually innovate to keep their shows interesting. Meanwhile, late night shows are often live or recorded in front of a live audience. This leaves little room for mistakes and hosts must be prepared to handle unexpected situations. Dead Therefore, ass. late night hosts are very much reliant on their staff Dead to help with research, writing jokes and sketches, making sure there are as little errors as possible. These writers and employees are Jimmy's lifeline. There is no show without them. And he made a crucial error on May 1st, 2023. Uh, I wouldn't have a show if it wasn't for my writers and I support them all the way. They gotta have a fair contract and they got a lot of stuff to iron out and uh, hopefully they get it done. If there is a strike, do you go dark? If there's a strike, uh, yeah, I think we, we will, yeah. I think we'll go, we'll go dark. Whatever I can do to support uh, the Guild, uh, I am actually in the Writers Guild as well, so... Uh, yeah, I couldn't do the show without them, and I support my whole staff. Although Jimmy says he will support his writers no matter what, his staff says otherwise. As one of his employees took to Twitter to write, Sheesh. he wasn't even at the meeting this morning to tell us we won't get paid after this week. Jimmy Fallon, please support your staff. Had fun bowling with you last week but a party won't pay my rent. I'm sure Dino. many of you have heard about the five month long writer's strike in Hollywood that just ended. And the reason for the strike- Yo, facts bro. I've heard of it, but I didn't get like into detail. Like, I don't know much about it. I just knew there was like, this was going on, you feel me? Writer's Guide of America on Strike. I hope Patrick explains this a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Sure, many of you have heard about the five month long writer's strike in Hollywood that just ended. And the reason for the strike is quite simple. The Writers Guild of America is the joint efforts of two different American labor unions representing thousands of writers in film, television, radio, and online media. Writers are the backbone of Jimmy Fallon and all of Hollywood's content. Without them, there are no jokes, no scripts, no stories, nothing. Yet somehow, they are the least compensated, with most of them yeah. earning below the poverty line in salary. Writers make a bulk of their earnings through residuals, which is a percentage that gets paid out to them every time a movie or show is streamed or syndicated in the future. But Hollywood executives restructured the industry during the streaming era so these writers get basically nothing after the content is uploaded. And the studio- So shit, bro. So fucking shit. That's, that makes me think of like producers, like music producers. You feel me? Like you got, you got, um, for example, Drake, right? Hit after hit after hit. Man's is well known, loved, all of that, right? But people overlook the producers, bro. The people who make the beat, who mix it up and make it sound like the final product. You know what I'm saying? So slept on, bro. Studios are profiting tens of billions while the people who are actually creating the ideas from scratch are on food stamps. So Jimmy saying he supports his staff no matter what but not increasing their salaries to a livable wage had them pretty pissed off, which led to a Rolling Stone article that contacted over Damn. 50 Tonight Show employees revealing what Jimmy is really like behind the scenes. Although many praised Fallon for his immense talent and comedic gifts, nobody spoke on record or had positive things to say about working on The Tonight Show. Interestingly enough, three employees who originally worked on Late Night claim a dramatic and ugly shift in working environment occurred once they transitioned to the Tonight Show. People that worked under them felt this pressure that if you made one mistake, you were gone and would be easily replaced. And that right there is why people, people should be out here, you know, trying a hobby or, or side business or just anything, bro. Because you are replaceable like this. It don't matter how good you are or something. One little fuck up and you're gone, bro. You could be the best writer. There is. Best producer. All of that. You're the best. You're the best. And one little fuck up can get you fired, bro. Get you gone. That's insane to me. Placed. From 2014 to 2022, there were nine different showrunners. This constant change in leadership gradually created a chaotic atmosphere among staffers who expressed their loss in faith in senior leadership. Nobody told Jimmy no. Everybody walked on eggshells, especially showrunners. Another former employee says, you never know what Jimmy you were going to get and when he was going to throw a hissy fit. They described Jimmy's temperament, yeah. mood, and treatment of staffers as erratic. They suggested Jimmy Fallon was unpredictable, having witnessed him snap at crew members over the smallest things. They also claimed Fallon occasionally berated and belittled staffers out of frustration. Three former employees said that he berated them in front of other colleagues and crew members. It was like, if Jimmy's in a bad mood, Everyone's day is 
act. When something was wrong, we all knew how to behave afterwards, which was just sort of avoid eye contact and don't make another mistake. Dude. The article then dives into Jimmy's SNL skit in 2000, where he did an impression of Chris Rock while doing blackface. Jimmy apologized for this skit that resurfaced in 2020, and the article followed up this information. 2000? into Jimmy's SNL skit in 2000 where he did an impression of Chris Rock while doing blackface. Jimmy apologized for this. 2000 while and I made a terrible decision to do an impression of Chris Rock while doing blackface. There is no excuse for it. I'm very sorry for making this unquestionably offensive decision. Thank all of you for holding me accountable. Bro, 2000. 20 years later, this man is apologizing. It's just, it, it blows my mind, bro, how people go back. They go back in time and try to find some shit on you, bro. Skit that resurfaced in 2020, and the article Insane. followed up this information with an employee alleging that the staff tried to sweep this controversy under the rug. A black employee claims that showrunner Granite Benderman kept asking them, what is going on with your hair? Trying to paint the picture of a racist environment behind the scenes at The Tonight Show. Employees claim that they experience deteriorating health effects due to the environment, hair thinning, extreme weight loss. Mentally, I was in the lowest place of my life. I didn't want to live anymore. One longtime employee says they never reported their issues to HR because early on in their tenure at the show, they saw colleagues of theirs attempt to speak to human resources representatives and subsequently got fired from the show. They don't protect us. Look at that shit, bro. Look at that shit. You want to speak up on an issue, you're gone. That, that's absurd, bro. That's fucking absurd. I'm sorry. Y'all, handle business, okay? Handle your business. You gotta work for somebody, do it. But please, please, please try to find something on the side. You know what I'm saying? Start a business. Do something. I know it's easier said than done, but like, it's so many resources on the internet. Do something, whatever it takes, bro, to, to get yourself away from that regular, degular 9 to 5. You feel me? And if that's for you, okay. You, you feel me? Keep doing your thing. If you happy, you happy. You're not saying, but like, it's just a fact of you getting fired, bro. You feel me? Putting in all that work in and getting fired just like this, bro. You know, it's scary, bro. The former staffer says they don't do anything for us. Many of you watching have probably worked in a toxic environment and have experienced similar ramifications as these employees alleged. Fact. So you can easily see this being a reality for Jimmy's show. Others speculated that this is nothing more than a hit piece. Many think that Jimmy's short temper, erratic behavior, and need for nothing less than perfection is standard for someone putting on a show for millions and millions of people. They think most of the worst allegations are against the showrunners, and Jimmy has to take the blame since he is the boss. Most people wonder why someone wouldn't just get a new job if it was so bad. Then again, Jimmy did come from SNL, which was one of the most high-stress work environments that led to multiple employees suffering. Get a new job if it's too much. Bro, it's never that easy either, bro. It's not easy to find a job in, in the same, like, field that you're in, you feel me? For some it is, for some it's not. And, like, who's to say you finding a new job, it won't be the same if not worse? You just don't know suffering from substance abuse issues. So it's not that hard to believe that he could have created a similar environment thinking it's just show business. However, after Rolling Stone published the article, Fallon apologized to staff members in a Zoom call. It's embarrassing and I feel so bad, Fallon said, according to two people who were on the call. Sorry if I embarrassed you and your family and friends. I feel so bad, I can't even tell you. We don't have the full apology, so we don't know if Jimmy is accepting blame for all of these allegations, for just a few, or if he is just following the command of his PR team to avoid the same outcome as Ellen. As he Ellen? Oh, Ellen, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, I remember that one. I remember that one, bro. It's, 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 it's crazy. Absurd, bro. His character behind scenes is opposite. Is one of the most accurate depictions of wholesome Hollywood personas. Mm -mm. Your video was a masterpiece. The way you engage your audience is remarkable. Keep up the great work. Yes, sir. Bro, Patrick's videos is top tier, bro. I'm sorry. Top tier, you hear me? Yeah, bro. It's, 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 it's scary. It's scary being in a workplace and just like... Just even thinking about getting fired. You know what I'm saying? You can do everything right. Everything on point. Bar for bar. 
task to task, you feel me? Like everything's perfect, damn near, quote unquote. And you could still get fired. You know what I'm saying? That shit don't sit right with me. That don't sit right with me, bro. You can be the best of the best and still get let go. That's 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 just it's insane to me. Oh man. Hey. I feel this ain't this ain't nothing new, bro. Like you said at the end, Alan, she's been through this shit. This shit is nothing new, bro. It's it happens everywhere. You know what I'm saying? And it's unfortunate. But let me know what y'all thought. That's my reaction from the joke of this video. Like, subscribe if you haven't. And I'm out.